popular podcaster Andrew Huberman is the subject of a new expose in a lengthy article published Monday. New York Magazine accuses Huberman of serial infidelity that might have led to spreading a sexually transmitted infection, plus manipulation and just bizarre behavior. The outlets deep dive into Huberman, a Stanford University neurologist who blew up over his strict lifestyle that promotes physical, mental health and wellness, seems to want to paint a portrait of someone who portrays a much different persona in public than he does behind closed doors. According to the magazine, author Carrie Howley spoke to five women who, unbeknownst to them, were his former girlfriends simultaneously. Howley also interviewed several people who say they know him and all confirmed Huberman's peculiarities. Huberman declined the magazine's request for an interview and instead responded through his publicist, who declined every allegation. But does any of this actually matter? Journalist Glenn Greenwald said this on X, posting, quote, I never listened to Andrew Huberman and know little about him, but I kept reading this endlessly gossipy article in this SHIT magazine, <laughs> waiting for even a single revelation about his private adult life that merited public interest or knowledge, and never found a single one. And I responded to Glenn and said, I agree. And then he responded to me, and we had a little discussion of it. Um, uh, former co-host of, of this show, Sagar Jetty, uh, has been on a tear about this issue. Mm -hmm. I think he did a... a, a their version of a radar mm -hmm. for it on breaking points. Um, so I, uh, like Glenn and unlike Sagar, I had never heard of this person mm -hmm. until this story. Mm -hmm. uh, Sagar, I think, has gotten, has listens to him and gets some value out of him um, and, and was thus very defensive about this. But I frankly agree with Glenn and, and mostly agree with what Sagar was saying that I, I read the article and it just never gets to, the, you're expecting like a Me Too thing or like a, or something that was more, it just never gets beyond, I mean, the guy's not, he's not married. He was dating multiple people. He can test some of their, it just seems like kind of his messy personal life and does not at all rise to the level of something the media should have weighed in on. Like what is New York Magazine's the, 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 the not even the marriage police, the relationship police? Well, okay, a couple of things here. So I am, so like you, not familiar with this man at all, never heard of him before this blew up, but I am very familiar with New York Magazine. And I do think that some of the confusion or anger seems to be not understanding that this is a culture mag that does these kind of pieces. I saw Sagar suggesting that because a recent cover story involved polyamory, that New York Magazine was being inconsistent about saying multiple sex partners are good, but it's bad when They're this guy does it. They're not being They think multiple sex partners for women is good and multiple no. sex partners for men is bad. <laughs> I think the issue is that consent, like polyamory, consensual polyamory and cheating are different things. And the accusations in this article is that he represented himself as being in exclusive relationships with these women, that he had unprotected sex with these women, and that there were consequences that resulted potentially from that act of deception. And that that contrasted with his persona on the podcast, as I made to understand it from this article and from reading around a bit, is that he's very much about health and wellness and almost approaches kind of a, a spiritual guru status that I think is rightly seen as inconsistent with the kind of emphasis, uh, sorry, with the way that he's been practicing his Maybe if you life. deluded yourself to thinking you're in an exclusive relationship with a very popular health and wellness no, guru, the, that's, not that's on you. But the article doesn't say these women deluded themselves. Well, it, it gives their account one side of these accounts okay. that he can test. Well, multiple women saying they were represented, it was represented to them that they were in an exclusive relationship. Huberman had an opportunity to give some commentary here to the, um, in response to the article. I, th I do feel like in some instances he responded because there was a point in the article where his main squeeze, Sarah, um, they started planning to have uh, multiple rounds of IVF together. Sarah says that they were trying to conceive a child, which is usually the reason why you do IVF. A spokesperson for Huberman, this is according to the story, denies that he and Sarah had decided to have children together, clarifying that they decided to create embryos by IVF, which to me feels very much like a distinction without a difference, but is also evidence that some, if not he, his representatives did offer some commentary here on the story. So I, I you know, I don't think the, the point here is to dispute whether or not he was in an exclusive relationship or that, whether or not he was a I cheater. I think the point is it doesn't You can say that it's irrelevant. Right. You can or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter enough to be. It might matter for, in terms of it hurt these people. But it doesn't to me. Miss, um, it, to me, it is not enough to write a story about. It. If I was the editor of the story, I would have killed it. Well, I would have just not. Well, I think that it. also might have to do, Robbie, with the fact that you're not familiar with this guy, and neither am I. But I can imagine other scenarios. Let's say Hunter Biden. I might not 
you know, like or respect a purient interest in his personal life. But I'm certainly not going to sit here and say it's not interesting and good content and perfectly newsworthy for someone to write up what was discovered on Hunter Biden's laptop and to talk about the fact that this man was struggling with addiction and all these kinds of things. I mean, like, I, I, this is apparently a very famous, very successful podcast. But this is... I don't think those things are are closely enough related. I mean, would he? And frankly, I've said I've I've discouraged all the coverage of the salacious and prurient aspects of the Hunter Biden stuff because I, I really do, in fact, think that his drug issues and uh, and uh, relationship issues are none of anyone's business. The drug issue and the gun issue are at least things that are legal matters and probably relevant given that his father is the president of the United States. If it was just mm -hmm. he dated a couple people, I like that would not be the fact that he married his brother's ex. Let's like, all of that stuff. This guy's just, just wait a minute, wait a minute. A bunch of we all saw reporting on and know things about intimate details of Hunter Biden's life that have absolutely nothing to do with the law. And moreover, the idea that because well, he's the wait a minute, wait a minute. Because he's the president's son that makes him more of a legitimate target than someone who themselves is famous? I mean, because he was alleged to have been trying to sell his influence over his father to foreign partners. Yeah, but partners. we, we both mean, know the... that all of the stuff about his personal life has nothing to do with that. So here no, we I are again. I, look, I'm not, I'm not even defending that this got This written, is so many rungs down this from is, that. Though. I'm not even defending that, the, the, like, I don't care about this article. But I do think that some of the arguments that are being made about it don't track with other arguments that the same people have made about the value of other kinds of um, written material. This is a culture magazine that writes about cultural phenomena. And frankly, to the extent that I saw uh, in, in Sagar's Radar, they says that there's no positive, um, and there's no, you know, positive descriptions of this guy included in the article. I, I felt quite the opposite. But there was a lot of commentary from friends who said a lot of lovely things, and it really helped me to understand why this guy is so appealing. The first third of the article or so really helps to build the basis for people like myself who are coming to this fresh. And the stories that I found to be most kind of interesting weren't even so much the infidelity angle, which I understand has been the focus on the media for obvious reasons, but these stories about how he apparently once had planned to do a hiking trip with a friend, they prepared for a long time, they consulted on all the technical gear and stuff they would need, and then he invited, he came over to his house where they were ostensibly supposed to go off together on this trip, and he just disappeared for hours or all day, and they ended up doing little hikes around the neighborhood, but they just canceled the trip, and then apparently this happened again with a, like a deep sea I, scuba. I, I, Wait a minute. occasionally ghosted plans. Wait a minute. Am I going to have Let a Let me finish this. Let me finish up? this. This is not something that normal people do. I'm sorry. You cannot pretend that this is normal, to plan for a long period of time, to buy technical equipment for a camping trip, and then have the person come over, and they just ghost and leave you in their house with their dog, to do the same thing with a, some kind of scuba or deep sea diving trip, where you had this person had to train like a month in advance at great personal expense and go to get certified to even do this dive, showed up and he canceled at the last minute. I mean, this is an interesting incongruity for someone who seems to have their life so together and really advertises themselves as someone who helps you to get their life together. I, you know, it might it's not the story of the year. No one's winning a Pulitzer for this. It's not anything this guy should be canceled over, I don't think. But it is an interesting insight into this human, who this human being is, the same way that someone might do a human interest story on... Uh, Patty Lupone or Michael Jackson or any other famous person that exists. I found the tone to be shrill and hectoring and malicious, and I want to take down this person who's a little bit of an alternative media type figure who is not, I think, who, who is someone the New York magazines of the world want to destroy because a lot of people who don't share their politics are finding Wait, value Wait, how is he it. alternative? I, think that's the, I thought he was just a Stanford professor who talked about um, neurons and he's happiness been on and Joe endorphins. Rogan. He's been on Joe Rogan. It's a little yeah, well, bit so of a, has Bernie Sanders. Well, it's a little bit of a, no, it's it's along, along a, a, I mean, he's, he's like Jordan Peterson, I think, appealing to um, a, a, a alternative, contrarian, even right-leaning audience of people. But what's, I mean, what's, soccer type people. But I'm asking you substantially, because I, I, you know, I don't yeah. see that in this article. I don't see, oh, you, I have read articles by liberal media outlets where they say things like, because this person went on Joe Rogan in an F clear effort to tar them. I think that was the, happened in a Matt Taibbi article that we were talking about, Matt Taibbi hit piece. The, the, I, I can 
confess I've only gotten about two thirds through this article. Because they couldn't find anything wrong to say about the things he says, but, so they but that's, then turned but to Bobby, this. That's just not, like, well, he was not ideal in all of his relationships. But that's not fair. You can't say he's being attacked for being right coded when the article seems to have no bones with the fact that he's right coded. Why won't you engage with what the article is upset about? The article is upset about the idea, or at least comments on the idea, that he's an inconsistent friend, according to his own friend. That he's an in friend. That, he's, that he is an, um, an a unfaithful lover, according to his multiple partners, that he was going as far as doing IVF cycles with a woman with two kids in her 40s, and then when asked for comment on it, says we weren't actually trying to make a baby, but we were just doing IVF. Well, you won't even acknowledge that, that is, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's interesting in the way that, you know, when you hear about somebody's relationship status or their or what they're up to it's interesting should it be turned into national news i don't think so all right i, I mean, think this fell this fell short of my standard for whether someone's hypocrisies or that's, personal that's behavior is, fair. And, and i agree with but what he's a, I, I think the problem here is that he is and i can't attest to this personally but i'm told this article is telling me that he's a very famous person and i think i might agree with you if he weren't but if someone said that there was some big profile of Jennifer Lawrence or Bradley Cooper, and they talk about Bradley Cooper's substance abuse. I think that's fair game. I, I just don't think it. I, I don't think it got anywhere close to this level. I, and I'm not alone in thinking this. Um, I read a great Substack piece by Freddie DeBoer, who's a kind mm -hmm. of leftist uh, commentator. Writes a great Substack. He's terrific. I don't always agree with him, and and I'm, I I think I'm giving a version of his take. He, he also thought the article was bad and probably, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to mischaracterize exactly what he said. He had a similarly long Substack post about I, it, but he writes, here's what I can tell you for certain, though neither Howley nor anyone at New York will ever admit to it. They invested a lot of time and effort on the Huberman piece and have spent the last few weeks leading up to publication fretting over the fact that there's no smoking gun, whether that should have told them something deeper about this endeavor, only they can. There is no smoking gun, but I guess I don't read it as requiring that, or nor do I have that expectation. It's a human interest piece. He's a human, and I gotta say, I'm interested. I think it felt like a takedown. That's so funny. I'm not reading it as a takedown. I, what I'm reading is a lot of people who are very defensive about this. If, if I liked this guy, and I've never listened to his podcast, maybe I will for the first time, because frankly, this is kind of interesting. I don't know that hearing that the guy like was unfaithful is going to make me not want to listen to the podcast anymore. It's just interesting color on somebody whose content I consume. Mm. Just the same way that you know, reading a profile on whether or not Bradley Cooper is whatever, really funny or secretly annoying or likes the color pink, whatever fact that might come out in a profile about him would make me feel more or less positively about the maestro. Well, I did not I expect didn't care for it. this to... <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect this to be our most fiery disagreement of the day. Uh, tell us what you think about this story. We'll have more rising right after this.